Who is watching Ladies Who List Atlanta? I just finished episode three. I just wanted to see if I would like it, but I think I do because we actual, actually see real estate. Or like selling um, Tampa. Because Tampa was like a whole bunch of drama with no real estate. So we've seen a whole bunch of real estate, which I like. But this episode is a continuation from last week where Robin was bringing the idea that it's a whole bunch of us melanin, beautiful women that could take over this real estate market. Which... You know, every other culture is able to do this successfully. But when it comes to the black culture, it's like we fight each other. I don't know what the intrinsic issue is, but I mean, if you look at like Indians that migrated here, they're like so tight knit people from Thailand, you know, the Chinese, they're like, so like they want their own to succeed. But for some reason, we black people, we fight each other. We saw it in Selling Sunset too. Because, okay, this black lady in Selling Sunset, I'm going off script, did a brokerage which brought a bunch of black, beautiful real estate agents together. But before the season was over, first season, they're all looking to like leave, start their own brokerages. At some point, we need to come together. I don't know when that would happen. But if you look at black history, it's a whole bunch of us turning on each other, which is kind of sad to see. Like, I'm... I'm, I migrated. Well, I was born here, but I lived in Nigeria most of my life. Eventually came back. And I did have those ignorant perspectives when I came back about like African Americans. And with time, with education, just being in the culture, I have learned so much to appreciate their struggles, which is very different from my struggles, even though we're both black, it's different struggles. But anyways, that's, I will talk about that at a different time. But anyways, back to this episode. It started off with such a dissension. Someone is talking about, oh, you charged me $500 per contract. That's not bad. You're making 3% and you guys are claiming to be high-end real, real estate people. So if you're making, if you're selling houses that like, let's say 500000 and above, 3% of that is about thirteen to 14000 So 500 for each transaction, personally to me, is not a bad thing because she could ask for more. So for her to take that so personally, and I like Robin because Robin is what you see is what you get. She owns her, her shortcomings. She owns her mental struggles. I wouldn't even call it illness because being traumatized like that as a child, like you got pregnant. It seems like from what she said, she didn't have a whole bunch of family support. I would be a little different, I think. And I think she owns it. She focuses on getting herself better. She focuses on meditation, yoga, to try to like overcome a whole bunch of stuff. Her kids are growing, but she's still working on herself, which we should commend. But the dissension and someone is mad that she unfollowed them. She was like, girl, we weren't communicating. Why am I following you? Which is how I feel. If I'm on Instagram and I'm your friend, we've not communicated since we added each other. I unfollow. It's no beef. It's nothing personal. It's just that I clean up periodically. And I think that is okay. But... This is the thing about black people not wanting to work with each other. It's like she brings an idea. The person that is supposed to be her best friend, Crystal, is basically the one trying to jeopardize her. Talking about your trigger. She did it the last time in the office and Robin told her, don't do that. But she does it because she knows this triggers Robin. So she's trying to trigger her even more. Then she says she's always angry. Who talks about their best friends like that? With best friends like that, Robin definitely doesn't need any enemies. Like Crystal to me seems like she's so jealous of Robin. And I think as the ep as the season progresses, we're going to see exactly why. Because her reaction towards Robin is always overly exaggerated. Then she's tearful or she's sorry or she's claiming they're best friends. You don't treat your best friends like that. Even, I think her name is Kiara. I don't know if Kiara is the one that was kind of age shaming Robin, which is so stupid. Because at the end of the day, is your hope not to get older? Because if you're shaming someone for being older, are you planning to die young? Like, what is your escape route for not getting older? Like, that is so... When people try to age shame, it's funny to me because I'm like, except your escape plan is to die literally young, you're going to get older because the alternative is death. So to age shame Robin, and Robin looks damn good. I didn't even know homegirl was 50. But when I did the math with her first child being about... 34, she being pregnant at 16. She's at least 49 to 51, that bracket. So I'm like, she looks great. For you to age shame her, like, oh, the younger people. Girl, how young are you? Because you look at least 35. You ain't no spring chicken. You're not 18 killing the market. 
35, you're in the right place. And if Robin started her career before you, she's in the right place. It's so stupid, like the whole age shaming thing. But there was a lady that I think it was Tiffany, because I think her was the age shaming one. But I think it was Tiffany that was defending Robin. I was like, Crystal, girl, you're supposed to be her friend. What are you doing? Because this whole meeting was a positive thing. And I understand we have to have drama. But let black people do positive things in public. If you were selling Sunset, they disagreed on a whole bunch of stuff. But guess what? They still work to him because at the end of the day, we're all making money. We're all winning. If you win, I win. But for us black people, it's like we fight against each other. We don't trust each other. We rather work with a different race, a different, you know, it's, it's sad. And I mean, I've seen this throughout. This is not anything new. And if black people are being honest, they will also admit that this has been happening. It's not new. I just wonder why we self jeopardize. Because her whole thought process is like, if we have a super brokerage of black entrepreneurs, because trust and believe the white people might not be having this public meeting about trying to make it a super black, white entrepreneur kind of franchise, but they're keeping black people out. If you go to top real estate companies, you don't see a whole bunch of black people. It's a bunch of Caucasians. So it's like, why can't black people come together in a cohesive manner? Everybody cannot be a top. Everybody can't be a top. There will be people that will own the brokerages and there will be sales agents. Like, that is okay. If your goal is to be a broker, be a broker. But do it positively. But this whole meeting went to shit. Then the lady that basically stood up for Robin met her after the fact and was like, girl, that was a mess. Like, Crystal being your friend, I don't get it. I also deal with mental illnesses was what the lady was saying. And I understood that what she was doing was not helpful. And that's true. And the, the other people that met, we saw B. Simone. I don't know if she's really going to buy a house or if she's just being featured as, you know, a YouTube celebrity, but whatever. That was not, I don't know. I got nothing from it. Then the lady that brought up the whole 500 per contract gets to the meeting. And Robin is like, okay, I acknowledge you were hurt. I apologize. She's like, but the apology wasn't real. I'm like, how can you tell someone it wasn't real? But Robin is like, well, I'm apologizing again. But can you also claim the fact that this was not the appropriate place to bring it up? Because she was nice, nasty. Because she's like, I don't want us to beef like this in front of people, but I'm bringing this negativity and I'm dumping it in the middle of this meeting. Make it make sense. It's so stupid. Then Crystal goes to a fake therapy session, doesn't admit to what the hell she did, which we see her doing next episode. So she knows it triggers her, but she keeps saying the word trigger, trigger, trigger. I'm like, having a mental illness is not... It's not like a deficiency. Oh, I don't want to say it's not a deficiency because it might be depending on what level of mental illness you have. But it's not an insult. We don't insult people. We try to help people. We advocate for mental health. That's why we all hailed Simone Biles when she said, I'm taking a mental health break because I'm overthinking this. I could hurt myself for real, for real, if I don't take a mental health break. That's why we, we applauded Naomi Osaka for stepping back from the world because she want to take a mental health break so crystal is like shaming her she's like doing this whole classist thing or oh, rob came from such you know minimal means she's not like us that girl i was just like mad and next week i'm gonna be mad again because crystal tries it one more time but anyway like subscribe comment let me know what you all thought but crystal is full of fluff she ain't nobody's friend she ain't even her own friend because she looked crazy on this show bye y'all